Hi, this is Mark with QuixVenture.com. In this video, we're going to install MySQL and PHP MyAdmin on a Synology NAS for use with XBMC. We're going to do this so that all of our XBMC clients can log into the same MySQL database and share the same video and music library. If you're using XBMC with a local library, you know that if you have two different ver or two different uh, clients and you watch one show somewhere, then the watched status will not update anywhere else. By connecting to a MySQL database, your watch status, your thumbnails, and uh, fan art will all remain the same. There are many videos out there that show how to do this, but this one is up to date and shows the fastest way to get it all installed with a Synology NAS. The first thing you need to do is log in to your NAS. You have to be an administrator so that you can install applications. And we're going to need to go immediately to the control panel and enable WebStation and MySQL. That's under the Web Services, under Network Services. And just check the boxes for WebStation and enable MySQL and click Apply. While that's updating, we're going to go to the Package Center. And we're going to find PHP MyAdmin. You can do everything through the terminal if you want, but PHP MyAdmin makes it very easy to install the uh, database user that XBMC is going to use. Click on All when you get to the Package Center to view all of the available packages from Synology. PHP MyAdmin is natively supported. It used to be a bit of a kludgy hack, but now it is a fully supported and native application. So scroll down into the P's until you find PHP MyAdmin and click Install. It will download the package and install it. It takes less than a minute. I'm using a disk station DS110J, so it's about four years old, a single drive model with a very slow processor and not a whole lot of RAM, but it works very well as a NAS for uh, XBMC. I can definitely stream multiple videos to multiple clients, and I've never had any trouble in the four years that I've used it with MySQL. Once this has installed, it's going to show up as an icon in our Applications dropdown. So there it is, PHP MyAdmin. Click on the icon and it will open up the PHP MyAdmin login screen. The default user is root, you'll need to type that in, and there will be no password. Once you are logged into the PHP MyAdmin screen, all that we need to do is create a user. XBMC is going to take care of the rest and build the databases for us. There are other instructions out there that say you need to create the database first, but please don't do that. Ever since XBMC version 12, that's been an unnecessary step and it will cause you some problems. So go ahead and click the Add User button. And we're going to create a user with a name. I'm going to call it XBMC12. That's because I'm using XBMC version 12, and I'm going to want my database to reflect that in case I install XBMC version 13 and want to run two different databases simultaneously. Now, XBMC does version your databases, so it puts a number after each database that will make it so that you're not going to overwrite your database, but this way you'll know which database you're using. You'll have to uh, give yourself a password. I'm going to use XBMC 12 again. And I'm going to grant all privileges on wildcard name. This way, XBMC can create all the databases that it wants to with the name XBMC12 underscore. And I'm going to check all of the global privileges, meaning that XBMC will have total control of this database. In my environment, there is no other application that's going to use MySQL except for XBMC, so I don't need to worry about security. If you do need to worry about security, then you may need to adjust your permissions accordingly. Click Go, and that will create the user. So I have added a new user, and you can see it here, XBMC12, with all privileges. Now we just need to start up XBMC and modify the advanced settings file. I'm going to use a portable version of XBMC for this demonstration, so my uh, user data folder is going to be someplace different than it will be if you've installed XBMC on the local computer. If it is installed locally, then you're going to need to go to the app data folder. It's hidden underneath your local user, and find the XBMC folder and the user data folder. Uh, if you go to the XBMC website and search for advancedsettings.xml, you'll find the location of all the 
uh, the, the path for every different platform, be it Linux, Apple TV, or Raspberry Pi. The advanced settings.xml file will probably not exist unless you've created it. So create a new file called advanced settings.xml in Notepad. And we're going to type in a few uh, XML entries. You must include all of the entries that you see here in order for XBMC to generate your database for you. You start out with the advanced settings tag and then a video database tag. You'll set a type MySQL and that's to tell XBMC that we're going to be using the MySQL data database instead of a local database. Your host will be the IP address of your Synology NAS. The port will always be 3306. Your user is the username that you defined in phpMyAdmin as well as the password. And then you'll give your database a name. The name is not strictly necessary. I always do it because I like to know the name of my databases, so I call it xbmc12 underscore video. You'll do exactly the same thing for the music database, except that the name itself will end in music instead of video. Save the file and start xbmc. I've also already populated a sources.xml file, and that way I won't have to go through and add videos. Uh, if you're doing this without pre-populating sources, just go ahead and add videos so that you'll set path to your various sources. Once you have done that the very first time, you'll copy the sources and advanced settings from your, uh, the first client that you use and just put it on all of your other clients, and that way you won't even have to add sources on your next client install. So when I start XBMC, the first time it's going to take a little bit longer because it has to create all the databases and uh, add data to all the fields inside the Synology. Uh, the next time I load XBMC, it will go much faster. And you can hear my NAS trucking away on the uh, other side of the room. So as I said, I have already added entries under files for films and TV. If this is the first time you're using uh, this installation, you'll go to add videos and you will create a new source and set the path. That path can be on the Synology or it can be anywhere else in the network as long as it is consistently named so that all of the clients on your network can reach it. You'll also have to use the same protocol on all of your clients. That is, if you use SMB for one, you'll need to use SMB for all or NFS for one, you'll need to use NFS for all. That's because the database will uh, assign, or the, the database entries will be path specific, and the NFS version versus the SMB version will not be uh, the same in the database. So now go ahead and right click on one of the sources, or when you're creating the sources, you'll set the content as the last step, and this will start to populate the database. Films, in this case, is for movies, and I'll download all the uh, metadata for those. I've got a few dummy files sitting out there just to show you that it's going to go and scan. And then we're going to go look inside phpMyAdmin, and I'll show you that the database is functioning. So now inside databases, we've created a music database and a video database. Like I said before, the number after the database name is the version number of the uh, database itself. So in this case, using XBMC version 12.3, the current version of the video database is 75. In XBMC version 13, the video database moves up to 78. So if I were to install XBMC 13 Gotham and use the same settings, uh, the first time I load up XBMC, it will go to the database, it will make a copy of whatever's there in 75, and a new XBMC 12 underscore video 78 database will be created and formatted properly for use with that version of XBMC. If I use a version 12 client and a version 13 client at the same time, the 12 client will continue to use and update the older 75 version, and the new XBMC version 13 client will start using the new video 78 version database, and they'll be out of sync. So be aware of that and keep all of your XBMC versions the same on all of the clients that share a database. That's all there is to it. So now if I go to the movies section on XBMC, it will be populated with movies and they'll have all the banner art and fan art. One of the nice things about XBMC version 12 is that that fan art is kept locally 
with referenced links inside the database. So that means that I no longer have to create symbolic links to my thumbnails folder. When I create a MySQL database and use it, all of my clients will look at the same place for that banner art and download it locally. So banner art is very quick and there's no added steps. That's all there is to it. I can now connect to the same database and use the same fan art from all of my XBMC clients. Thanks for watching. This has been Mark with QuicksVenture.com.